Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be doing a colouring tutorial. I'm going to be colouring this image here with some watercolour pencils and I'm going to be showing you guys a variety of different techniques that you can use uh, to colour with your watercolour pencils. So the supplies you're going to be needing for this uh, tutorial today are watercolour pencils. I'm using the Woodless watercolour pencils from Arteza and Arteza was very generous and sent along, uh, sent, sent me along this set of 24 for me to use in this video today so I want to say thank you to Arteza for uh, thinking of me. And um, you can use whatever watercolour pencil brand you have on hand. Um, you can get Woodless watercolour pencils so these are just have the pigment leads and then it looks to me like they have like a clear coat of acrylic around the outside or you can get wood barreled coloured pencils that look like this. When you have your watercolour pencils, whatever brand you're using will work for this tutorial. Um, the first thing you, um, I recommend you doing is to swatch them all out and to take a brush and some water and to move the pigment around just so you can get a feel for um, how easy they come up and so you can see the colours because most of the time the colour on the outside of the pencil does not match the colour on the paper and obviously the colour dilutes quite a bit when you add water to it so it's kind of a, it's a really good reference point to swatch out your coloured pencil your watercolour pencils and um, the other things you're going to need are some water just a small cup of regular water. You don't need very much water when you're working with watercolour pencils. You're going to need a paper towel or a napkin or an old uh, rag or something. And then you're going to need some brushes. Now, I like to use regular uh, brushes. Um, and when I mean regular, I mean not uh, water brushes and I'll explain why in just a moment. Um, I find these are just random ones off my desk. I don't have special brushes for special things. I kind of just use, I use inexpensive brushes and I just use them for everything. Um, I find that the best sorts of brushes that work well are the slightly stiffer ones that are meant for uh, acrylic painting. The really soft brushes tend to hold a lot of water so um, when you're colouring with uh, watercolour pencils you don't want too much water on your paper and that's one of the biggest mistakes that I made when I was starting out with water colour pencils, I was used to water colouring, I'd get lots of water on my brush to blend things and I would just push my pigment everywhere and I'd lose all the colour that I'd put on the paper so don't you, you don't want a brush that's going to hold too much water I like the, these, these sort of acrylic painting brushes are really nice for that and the reason why I don't use a water brush is because again it's the water control you get too much water onto the bristles. Um, if however you don't have any normal brushes you just have a few of these I would suggest emptying the barrel and just using it like you would a regular brush and dip it into the water rather than use the water in the barrel. So you can use um, Aquash brushes, these are the Aquash by Pentel water brushes um, but I would take the water out of the barrel and use it as a normal brush if you want to use it with watercolour pencils. Um, and then the last thing you're going to need is some watercolour paper and I'm using 300 gram 300 gram um, hot press watercolour paper and hot press paper means that it's very smooth and you want a smoother paper really for watercolour pencils otherwise the pencils can um, if you have a very textured watercolour paper what happens is the pencils skip a lot and you don't get a very smooth colour lay down of course if that's the look you're going for then go ahead and use it um, but when you're starting out um, try using hot press smooth watercolour paper and a cold press paper has more texture. Hot press is smooth, cold press is textured. And um, this image that I'm going to be colouring here is from the Breeze colouring book. Um, there's an, a shop link, a link to my shop in the description box below where you can um, see the colouring book and it's a digital download so you can print it out onto whatever paper you want. This is printed out onto watercolour paper with pigment ink so it's waterproof and obviously if you're doing your own artwork and you're lining it make sure you use a waterproof liner. So that said um, I'm just going to quickly show you the different techniques in up close in real time and then I will jump into a time lapse and do a voiceover for the colouring part for the colouring of the colouring page part so I'm just going to um, turn my pages over this is a little test I did with some watercolour pencils to test them out um, just to kind of have a look at my notes here so the first technique for applying watercolour pencils to um, the paper. Oh, one other thing quickly before we begin. Um, I just remembered. Now these pencils, this brand in particular by Arteza, you can see that the 
the ends uh, kind of have this, like this kind of pale white coating on them. So let me get one that I've used. So this this purple pencil I've used, and there's no white coating on it. That white coating is some sort of sealant that they, they it comes like that when you when you get them out the packet. Um, I, not all brands have a sort of sealant on the end, but I do see I have noticed that uh, water soluble crayons sometimes do as well. So you just want to take that, you want to rub that off. You can sometimes scratch it off or dip it into the water into uh, some water and just rub it uh, with a off and just get that off because that sealant will stop you from getting the colour properly out of your pencil and because the Arteza pencils are not sharpened to a point I like to just sharpen them a little bit before I use them. The other thing you need to bear in mind when you're sharpening your watercolour pencils is you can only sharpen them when they're dry and I'll show you how you can get them wet in a moment but just remember don't sharpen your watercolour pencils when they're wet because um, the pigment will get uh, the pigment gets really soft. So there you see um, there's no uh, coating on that anymore. And I, I have actually tried putting water into there here to kind of activate the pigment. And I haven't had a lot of luck with it. I tend to find it's grainy. You can, of course, go ahead and try it and maybe you can make it work. But I haven't had a lot of luck just adding water into the shavings there. So first uh, technique is to go directly to the paper. So you, will you want to take your pencil and you just want to colour directly to the paper. And the trick is when you're doing this is you need to be light with your touch. If you are heavy handed you will score the paper and what you want for this first technique, this first direct paper technique, is just to get a nice even layer of colour that you can completely dilute. And you can also mix in, you can also kind of layer multiple colours on top of each other to create different shades and I'll show you how I um, colour with these in a moment using this technique. I just want to show you the techniques up close um, because when I'm colouring the colouring page it's a little bit harder to see exactly what I'm doing so I'm just going to go through them really quickly now. So that's direct, that's a dry pencil to dry paper and then I'm going to grab some water. I'm going to put my brush into the water and then I'm going to wipe it off a bit and then I'm going to grab my paper towel and just dab that off a little bit. You don't want too much water on your brush. And then I'm just going to go in and um, liquefy the pigment. And you, as you can see, you get a nice smooth, I think I may have actually taken too much water off that brush. There, okay. So you can get a nice smooth layer of colour and there's no um, there's no scoring of the paper. You can get nice smooth layers of colour like that. And now you may be thinking, well, that's not very dark. If you see the colour of the pencil, that's very light. You can do multiple layers of watercolour pencils and I'll show you in a moment a way to get a much darker colour. So that's pressing lightly direct to paper. Now let's say you actually want some lines to show. So a, 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 way, a reason why you might want to do this is if you're doing hair or fur or something where you want to get strong, you want to get the colour on the page but you also uh, kind of want some markings left or you're doing grass or vines or something where you want the, those marks to show through. So now we've done that and as you saw I pressed a lot harder than I did back there. I'm going to grab some water, dab it off and now I'm going to liquefy this. And as I liquefy it you can see that I'm moving, the I'm getting the pigment up and moving it around but I still have those lines underneath. Now most of the time you're probably not going to, you, you want to aim for this. You don't, you want to aim for smooth colour. You're probably not going to want your lines to show so much, but there is a time and a place, like if you're doing hair or fur or grass, or you just want some texture and you're do, perhaps you're doing abstract paintings and you want some texture marks, then there, are, there is a time and a place to press hard on the paper, but that is what you're going to get. As you can see, you can still see the lines really clearly underneath. So that's direct to paper dry. And now I'll show you um, another technique. Um, I'll show you how to take um, ink directly off the pencil. So you want to take your, get to your paintbrush, put it in the water, dab it off, and then just rub it on the end of the pencil like this. And this way you can get a really intense colour. As you can see, it's all on the end of my pencil, the end of my paintbrush, and you can paint it on. And you can, so the, this, this way is very similar to um, using regular watercolours. You can get very strong colour because that is the same colour. And you can see you can get really different, um, different colour, 
different strengths of the colour out. So that is applying it directly to the pencil end. Now with the woodless pencils it's much easier to do this technique but you can do it as well with the wood cased pencils. Sometimes you can use a craft knife to shave down the wood so you can expose more of the more of the lead and that's and that's fine. Um, and look, you can get the colour off the same way as well. It's just easier with the woodless pencils because more of the barrel, more of the pigment is exposed. So there. So that's how you get you can get um, paint directly off the end of your pencil. And using that technique, you can also mix paint colours uh, the pe pencils together. So let's say you want to mix a couple of colours because you've you've only got a small set of pencils so we're going to use an acrylic block here now you don't have to have an acrylic block you could use some packaging um, an old CD case you know anything that's plastic or a clear acrylic or a tile or a plate just something that's non-stick and um, smooth I'm going to rub that on and then we'll grab another colour let's say let's grab a pink and mix some pink into it and you just want to sort of rub the end of the pencil like this and mix the colours together and that way you can mix whatever colours you want and apply them just like you'd apply watercolour um, regular watercolours and if you just if you don't have regular watercolours and you just have a set of these pencils then you could go ahead and make your own little palette on um, uh, some plastic packaging and leave it to dry and then reactivate the pigment just like you would with watercolours so that's a way you can mix the colours together on an acrylic block and of course you can also do that technique where you stamp using the acrylic block to create some different techniques. So you can put multiple colours on, um, spritz it with some water, just like I do sometimes with watercolour markers. If you've seen one of my videos, I will scribble some colour out, spritz it with water, stamp it on to create an abstract background. You can do that with the watercolour pencils and the acrylic block. The other thing that you can do with watercolour pencils, and you can scribble them to get the pigment up, is if you use packaging that has some texture to it. So this is an old um, pen case, and if you, if you can see it has these sort of ribs. You can hear the ribs there, these sort of notches in the plastic. Well, using something like this, you can scribble the pencils onto it, and then grab some water. I just wash my brush a bit, grab some water and activate the pigment like this and then paint with it so um, if you if you want to uh, make a little palette and you want to scribble the um, scribble the um, pencils directly onto the onto the packaging you can do that and then you can activate the pigment mix pigments together and create your own little palette and this is particularly useful if you have um, a small set of watercolour pencils often sets don't come with good skin tones so you often need to mix skin tones and this is a good way to mix them so remember to save any packaging you see that, ha that has kind of texture or ribs, um, ridges to it um, because this is a useful um, technique that you can do with that so there's some ways that you can mix the watercolour pencil colours together um, now there are I'm going to show you a wet and a wet on wet technique. You can a wet on wet is a a popular watercolor watercolor technique. You just want to wet an area of your paper, and it, depending on how you want the colors to flow together, you can be fairly generous with the water. Then you want to grab pigment directly off your off your paintbrush, off your pencil, and drop it um, into the water, and then do the same with different colors and you can get lovely blends like that. So using the pencils this way you can get pretty much the same effects that you would with regular watercolours. And also if you have a big brush, look, you can flick you can flick the colours off the end of the the pencil like that. So you can these are what I think watercolour pencils are but really really um versatile. As you can see, you need a nice big flat brush and you can get some lovely splatter effects. So there's some different techniques. Um, there is another technique I want to show you quickly, and that is uh, working on wet paper again. So let's wet uh, another piece of this paper. I'll just wet this little bit up here, and let's get a brush we haven't used, a uh, pencil that's dry. So I'm gonna take this purple, and I'm gonna draw directly onto the wet paper. Now this is another way that you can keep your lines. So what, as you can see, I'm drawing on the wet paper and the pigment is spreading out a little bit, but these lines that I'm drawing will remain. These lines will not go away once this is dry. So um, I'm just going to leave that for a second to dry and I'll come back and show you and I'll show you another technique. The other thing you can do is you can dip your, paint, your pencil 
directly into the water just to kind of wet it a little bit and that way when you color you get a much vi you get a really vibrant color but you want to be uh, uh, careful with this technique because once the you can um, end up gouge, um, scoring the paper a bit too much sometimes as you can see there underneath I the the pencil lines w won't rub out very well when you dip your pencil directly into the water and then apply it to the paper so my favorite techniques are definitely going with the paintbrush to the pencil or applying the pencil onto dry paper and then liquefying it and I also like the sort of splattering technique and as over here if I just move the paint around you see those lines are not going anywhere those lines are there forever now so if you want to get lines to stay you can apply the, the um, pencils very hard to the paper and then apply water or you can apply the pencils to wet paper and boat and you'll keep the lines you make if you want very clean lines uh, underneath a um, painting then applying the pencils to wet paper uh, achieves that look very well so there are some different um, techniques that you can use with your watercolor pencils and these pencils here are uh, they're, they're wet when they're wet you want to make sure that you um, rest them as you can see there are a lot of pigments coming out so you, you don't want to have them rolling all over your desk because it was it will make a big mess now because they're water soluble um, you can uh, wipe your desk down afterwards that's no problem um, but you probably want to just put them aside like that to dry on a kitchen towel or a paper napkin or something um, so that you don't get in a big mess I just will warn you about that because I find that they can get quite messy so now I think I'm going to go into the time lapse and colour in that little image and uh, show you guys how you can put these techniques together to actually colour an image because it's one thing to see the techniques demonstrated um, but it's another to kind of see how they come together to form an image so um, this tutorial is a long one but I, I have quite a lot to cover and I, I hope you're finding it uh, useful so now I'm starting with the colouring and I'm going ahead and I'm using the direct pa to paper technique and I'm just using a dry pencil onto dry paper and the way that I colour when I'm colouring with watercolour pencils and with watercolour markers for that matter is that I start I lay my colour down where the shadows would be so you saw me lay the brown pencil down under her neck and around her hairline and over uh, on her nose a little bit I just place the pencils the color where the shadows would be then I take my paintbrush and I blend the color out into the highlight areas and by doing that you create instant shadows within one layer of color and so I find that this uh, using watercolor pencils or, or markers is a very um, it's a very quick way of coloring especially if you don't have a lot of time one day to spend on doing a lot of um, if I was doing this for instance with markers with alcohol based markers I would have to do three or four layers in order to get um, that a uh, blend but with watercolor based products you can get that blend within one layer so it's a if you don't have a lot of time to spend coloring or you perhaps you do adult book coloring books and you don't have hours and hours to spend coloring something then a water based um, coloring supply could probably be a good option for you because it wouldn't take you so much time to get that depth of that depth of shadow anyway so I'm applying I'm doing that same technique all over the first layer and this is how I like to work with watercolor I, I like to just put that first First layer down, establish where my shadows are, and then dry, then uh, liquefy all the all the pencil, and then dry it off. And I did use my heat gun in between layers here to uh, make sure the paper was dry before I started adding more stuff to it. And I'm just putting the pencil down onto the dry paper, colouring where I want the shadows, and then drawing the uh, colour outwards to create these gradients to help the patterned areas of the flower um, have lots of depth and dimension. And another thing that I did on the face was I layered some different colours together. So another way that you can mix colours, apart from mixing them on the acrylic block like I showed you earlier, is to layer them on top of each other when you're, you, when you're working on dry paper. So I layered some browns, some purples and um, a little bit of red together to create the skin tone for this, for this girl. And I layered all those colours over each other in the shadow areas and then when I liquefied it I drew it out and it all mixed together to create um, a skin tone so you can make a couple you can layer down a couple of layers of different colors before you even liquefy it to create some extra dimension and then I went ahead I used the acrylic block mixed some black to do her the, her hair details and I also mixed a little bit of black and brown to create a very slightly darker shadow color 
for her skin. And and the, now I'm I'm using a variety of different techniques. Now this is sped up a lot. This took me um, I think an hour and a half to colour, but because I didn't want this video to be super, super long, I wanted to speed this up. And this is why it was important that I showed you all the techniques in real time earlier, because it'd be very hard to explain what I'm doing when it's sped up this fast. Um, but you can see I, I did some, I applied the paint directly from the pencil using my brush. I put the the pencils onto wet paper to create some texture and I also did some splatters and a tip when you're doing the splatter portion if you want to do that splatter ring technique is that I did this sp I, I applied some splatters because I decided that I wanted this piece to have a kind of painterly um, splattery effect I thought it would go really nicely so I took yellow pink and orange or was it red well yellow pink and red I think and I created some splatters but then I found that the splatters were looking really a little bit too bold so I took my split a uh, a bottle a spritzer bottle with some water in it and just spritz them gently and if you look at the lower right hand corner of the drawing now you can see the splatters have sort of just burst and slightly faded out so that's a really a useful uh, technique to know that if you are splattering with some paint and you just find it looks too too dark you can just take a spritzer bottle spritz all the splatters and you can even dab them off with a towel afterwards to just create a very light splattery effect and I think it looks really nice Nice. And now I'm just going ahead and using my Posca paint pens to add some details to finish this piece off. That's about it for this piece. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, a tutorial on watercolour pencils has been highly requested recently and I think a lot of you guys have watercolour pencils hanging around so hopefully this has given you some ideas for how to use them and there are loads of great videos on YouTube for how to use watercolour pencils. Um, the Frugal Craft Crafter has an hour, over an hour long live stream on watercolour pencils pencils which I highly suggest you check out if you'd like to um, learn some more. So anyway I hope you have a wonderful day everyone and I will see you next time.